All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obeisance channel. You have made it to episode 10 of A Noob's Guide to Hyperland. It's my hope, my sincerest hope, that you guys have found this useful. I've been making this for my 14 year old in hopes that he actually learns how to use Hyperland. He said he was interested in it. So, uh, yeah, with any luck, all this effort is not without um, some sort of reward for somebody out there. If it's not my son, hopefully someone else will learn from it. So if you have been finding this useful, it would mean the absolute world for me. Uh, if you hit the like button on any of these videos, you find useful because it lets me and my son know that I've done something right. And I just truly want to help anybody out there that wants to learn how to use Hyperland. I want to make it as easily accessible to really just anyone out there. There's no reason for it to be overly complicated for everybody. Not everybody wants to be a power user and understand the inner bones of Linux or Hyperland as I like to do. Um, and I understand that. So it's my hope to make it as easily accessible as possible. So... Uh, if you're new and this is the first video you're seeing, I definitely recommend you check it out from the beginning at episode 1. If you want to follow along, you can download my dot .files in the link in the description below. Uh, if you do choose to do that, I, again, highly recommend starting from episode 1 because I will teach you, if you don't already know, how to modify my dot .files to be excuse me, compatible with your hardware and most specifically your monitor setup because if you use my dot files, it's got my monitor configuration and it will probably do some wonky stuff if you just directly apply it to your Hyperland build. So take that with a grain of salt as you will and we're going to go ahead and dive into the last bit of what I have to offer at least for now. Uh, up to this point, we have covered all of the core configurations available with Hyperland uh, by default. So you've got everything from aesthetics and workspaces, auto start, environment, input rules, key bindings, monitors, variables, and window rules. This is what makes Hyperland Hyperland. It's what makes it function and look the way that it looks and functions. So um, I'm glad that you guys have, have joined me with this. I'm glad that you guys have followed along. Uh, last but not least, we're going to cover these last couple applications. And I do believe in earlier episodes I said, hey, you guys, you might want to install Waypaper, Hyperpaper, Hyperlock, and Hyperidle, um, and Hypershot. These are all applications that are very useful, especially relevant now. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about Hyperidle. Uh, this is more like more or less like your kitchen timer. It's going to start a timer as soon as you log in. And any time that timer detects that you have not been active on your computer for X amount of time, it's going to go ahead and enable hyperlock. It's going to lock your screen for you. That way, you know, your two-year-old isn't going and smacking on your keyboard and messing up your work. Uh, ask me how I know. Um, and it's that's pretty much all it does. Um, upon resume, it actually gives you a welcome back message. I've got it set to welcome back. Be productive. If you don't like that, go ahead and delete it. Control S to save and you're good to go. No welcome message. Now, uh, the timeout is about the only other thing you will probably want to modify in here because this determines how much time that you have before it will actually lock your screen. So if you just want to walk away and you want more than five minutes, then go ahead and adjust this to, uh, accordingly. Um, I do believe on timeout uh, that, yep, that's all default stuff. So this just is a, a function to lock your session. So that's pretty much it. There's not much to it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into hyperlock. This one is still a work in progress for me, guys. I'm pretty sure I disclaimed at the beginning of this course that... Uh, I'm still learning myself. I'm still actively developing my desktop experience. I don't even have my U-Bar up yet because I have so much to study that I just didn't want to include it with my guide. So uh, that explains why you don't see any status bar or anything like that or any kind of dashboard or widgets on my desktop is because I haven't learned enough to feel confident in sharing those. And honestly, I don't, I don't really need them. I just want them. <laughs> So uh, that being said, I'm going to kind of graze through this and give you guys an idea of what to do here. Um, I don't recall if I had updated this on the uh, repo, so I will try to remember to do that. I've actually sourced the variables. Uh, if I had not updated the variables 
on your guys' configuration from the repo, uh, you're going to see a list of variables at the top here. I would go ahead and just select them like this, Control X to cut, and then I would actually go back to your configuration files to the variables.conf and I would paste them in here. Uh, in fact, I've already done it with my configuration. So these variables that you see in your hyperlock.conf file, go ahead and put those into your variables.conf uh, and pat yourself on the back because that's the first time you've probably done that if you're a new user to Hyperland. So um, this is just ensuring that you're keeping all of your variables in a one central location. So anytime you need to modify them for whatever reason, you know right where to go. You don't have to fish for them. You don't have to find them. They're just right here in the variables configuration. So uh, if you do that, don't forget to source the variables configuration. If you don't want to have to type that out, you can cheat sheet it by going to key bindings and double clicking the source down here. Control C to copy, go back to hyperlock and you can control V to paste. And there you go. Congratulations, you just sourced your first variables. Now, moving on, general settings, we've got our font settings. You can set your font for the lock screen. You can set your large, medium, and small font, as well as input field width and height. If I lock my screen here, you're going to see this is my lock-in screen. You can change the font. You can change the input width and height. Uh, you can change your avatar. You can change your avatar border. You can change the dots and the dot spacing between your password. You can see... As I type my password, we have dots here, and you can change the spacing between them as well as the overall size. So if I go back in here, uh, you'll see input dot size, input dot spacing, input fade on empty, and input rounding. And of course, I've got all of this documented with comments at the end. So if you need any more clarity, feel free to read those. Ask any questions in the comments section below if you have any. Next, we've got background. Again, I have not updated this. I use variables now, and I haven't messed with this configuration in long enough that I still have the, the fully typed out string here. So um, this will be updated. Uh, hopefully, you've learned how to use variables, so you can know that you can go into the variables section here, and you can actually use your path and your wall here. Since you're sourcing your variables now from the hyperlock configuration, it's going to know what wall one is. So you could literally put wallpapers dash H and wall one variable, and that will do the same thing as typing out your uh, full string as I did here. Next, we've got blur passes. That's the same exact thing as the blur passes on uh, your everyday windows. You've got contrast, brightness, vibrancy, and vibrancy darkness. Again, these are all commented for better understanding. I do apologize for rushing, guys, but I have quite literally been working on these guides all day long, and I am starting to lose my voice, so I apologize for that. Uh, next, we've got general settings. We've got no fade in, set to true or false. No fade out, true or false. Disable fade in effect. Um, I personally like them, so I leave them at true. Um, actually... No fade in. I don't know why that's set to true because I do like them and I do believe setting no fade to false would mean that you have fade. Anyway, I digress. We've got hide cursor, true or false. Uh, you've got grace, grace period for locking screen. So it's my understanding that once the lock screen is enabled, if you set this to say 120, that'll give you 120 seconds to unlock your screen without the use of a password. That is my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, disable loading bar. I, I guess I mine loads so quickly I never see loading bars anyway, but I guess if there is a loading bar, I would assume that once you press enter or after entering your password, there may be a slight transitional period in between depending on your hardware, and this is where you would disable or enable that bar. Next, we've got the input field, uh, the monitor to, to display it on. You've got your size, your outline thickness, your dot size, your dot spacing, it's very similar. Most of this is pretty redundant because each section has its own configurations. Now, uh, if I scroll down here to date and time, you'll see that we can change again what monitor it is, what text and format the data is displayed. Uh, your color, your font family size, your font family, your position, your horizontal and vertical alignment. Um, again, I'm doing my best to comment all of these so that even though I'm kind of grazing through this now, you guys can still look at the configuration that I have provided and you will know exactly what it does. 
Uh, time is the same way. We've got monitor, text, color, font size, and font family, as well as position, uh, horizontal, and vertical alignment. Profile picture, we've got image, monitor, path, and profile picture path is defined in our variables, as we discussed earlier. You can change the size. I've got it set to 100 now. I'm just out of curiosity. I want to see if it'll actually change. So I'm going to input my password. If I actually did it right, I did not, and it's going to yell at me. Authentication failed. Now, when I log in here, if I set this to, say, 500, I don't know if this will work or not, but we're going to try it. We're going to lock. Holy cow, it actually worked. So you can see there, um, I did actually uh, confirm now that uh, the inquiry of grace period, when I locked my screen, now I have two minutes before I actually have to input my password. So that's super convenient for this demonstration purposes. So I can just move my mouse and it will automatically unlock now. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to like, uh, I don't know, well, I'm going to say 25 seconds uh, because I don't typically leave my computer that long. So um, anyway, moving on down back to profile picture. We're going to set this down to 100 because that was more reasonable. Uh, we've got border size. You can set this whatever you like, as well as border color. Uh, the border position, uh, excuse me, the profile picture position, as well as horizontal and vertical alignment. Now, the desktop environment for image set settings like your logo, etc. Uh, monitor, again, uh, it's getting kind of redundant here. It's the exact same features. We've got monitor, our path. Of course, mine needs to be updated to utilize our new variables. We've got our size and border size, border color and position, horizontal and vertical alignment. Now, here at the last, this is where it gets a little more interesting because I was trying to work on some scripts to make these more functional, and I wanted to have them done before I actually release my dot files, but I don't think I'm going to have the time to finish these scripts, so they are incomplete. Uh, they do not look good if you do happen to use them. They don't look good. They don't look right. Uh, if you happen to be a programmer, maybe it'll give you a foundation for something to work on. Whatever. You can do whatever you like. They are located in the scripts portion under Hyperlock. You've got battery, wallpaper, and what song. Um, I also have a, an install dependencies. I don't know if I actually included that with the repo version of my dot files, but basically that'll essentially install any dependencies that I personally use in the event that you wish to use my configuration files. So uh, do these with uh, do with these what you will. They may or may not work because they do um, rely on certain scripts, and I I really would didn't even configure this. I copied this from another uh, individual's build and I was trying to modify it and reverse engineer it to make it work for my all intents and purposes, but it didn't really work very well. So I ended up getting distracted. So that pretty much wraps that up, guys. We've got Hyperlock under wraps now and Hyperpaper is the last one that we have to address. Now, Hyperpaper is crucial if you want to have customization in, uh, by way of wallpaper. Uh, what Hyperpaper does is it preloads images directly to RAM. So the intention is the preload section is designed to load wallpapers directly into RAM, enabling faster access and smoother transitions when changing wallpapers during system operation. By preloading these images, the system can quickly switch between wallpapers without needing to load them from disk every time, improving overall experience, especially with high-resolution images. However... It is important to avoid preloading too many wallpapers, particularly high-resolution ones, example 4K images, as this may consume excessive system resources and degrade performance. So in my case, it doesn't really matter because I have an astronomical amount of memory, but if I were, say, on my laptop uh, with only 16 gigs of RAM, I probably wouldn't want to be loading, you know, 10 4K resolution images because that's going to be using valuable memory that I could use elsewhere, especially when I'm gaming. So try not to clog your preload. I try to keep it under 5. Uh, you can make it, what, excuse me, as many or as few as you like. Um, in, in the event that you want to use a dynamic wallpaper switcher, much as you guys have seen with my anime girls and my devlogs, uh, this is how I do this, is I load five images into uh, RAM upon login. 
Um, after that, I actually I actually upload that's five there and two of them here for vertical images. So I've actually got seven images total that I preload, and then I set the defaults with wallpaper equal DP2, which is my monitor, and then the path to the uh, directory. Now I could source uh, certain images here, I do believe, but uh, either way, I set them just here by static. And uh, that's, that's how you set your wallpaper upon login. So as long as you have your images preloaded through preload, then your variables, if we go up to configuration and variables where we set our paths here, that is where your dynamic window switching will actually take effect. So if we go into key bindings and we scroll down, we're going to see, uh, where is it at? Uh, I'm so tired, I'm getting, there it is. Okay, so this section here is our workspace wallpaper switching. And by pressing uh, our workspace switching combination, we've got exec dp1 paper1. So that references variables. It goes down and calls this function here, or this variable, which executes hyper control, hyper paper wallpaper, which is uh, your hyperland environment executing hyperpaper telling it to set wallpaper on said display and then execute wall one which is this variable here which executes wallpapers horizontal which is this variable here that defines the directory and then sets said image to your wallpaper I know that sounds super, super, super complicated, but it's really not. I promise you. It's just a chain reaction is all it is. And it's just a way to shorten it up so that you can use these variables throughout your configuration without having to type all of this crap every single time that you want to do it. So I hope that makes sense. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or corrections, don't hesitate to drop them below. Again, if you happen to find anything that I have said in this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It lets my son and I know that I've done something right. It means the world to me. Uh, yeah, anyway, if you guys would like to join us on Discord, feel free to do so. If you have any screenshots of your build and you've managed to develop something cool with any of the information I've managed to share here, I'd love to see it. I look forward to meeting you guys. I appreciate all the kindness, the love, and support you guys have shown me as I've uh, started releasing these videos. And uh, I hope you find this useful. I truly do. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking around. I'm absolutely exhausted, so I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Catch you in the next video. Take care, and God bless.